angels it's Haley Reese and it's October 3rd it's also Wednesday and I'm not wearing pink so I guess I'm a fake fan last night I couldn't sleep I was up super late and so I decided why not head on to reddit and read a bunch of different people's experiences and stories and things like that and before I even knew it I was down the rabbit hole of these stories and then I came across a title called There's a Dead Girl on Snapchat. And I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds so spooky. Why don't I read it for today's video? So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I have not pre-read this. I have no idea who this dead girl is and what she's doing on Snapchat, but I guess we will figure it out together. Before I get into this story though, I would just very quickly like to say if you are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed, but you do enjoy my videos, make sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button and turn your post notifications on because I am uploading every day from now until Halloween. So that's 31 videos back to back to back and I don't want you to miss them if you do enjoy. But without further ado, let's get into this because I am dying, <laughs> dying to know what this is about. I got a notification last night from Snapchat telling me that a friend of mine had just joined. The problem is, she was murdered five years ago. Lydia was a good friend of mine from back in the day. She was a part of our little group that would hang out. We would all go to the movies, out to eat, celebrate each other's birthdays, and so on. I'm not even sure how all of us started hanging out. At first, it was just two or three of us, and then the next thing I know, we're rolling 25 deep to cheddars on a random Friday night just because we had nothing else to do. Naveed joined our little group for a small amount of time. That was mainly because he had a crush on Lydia. That's fine. You get a large group of 20-somethings together, and you're bound to end up coupling up. In fact, most of the group of people back then decided to marry each other. It seems normal for Naveed to have had feelings for one of the girls. Nobody really thought anything of it. That was until things started getting weird. It started small, with Naveed asking Lydia out on some dates. They went out a few times, but Lydia wasn't interested in him that way. She told him as much, but he didn't really take the hint. When he went out as a group, he insisted on sitting next to her and would even get angry if someone else tried to take that seat. At some point, the two of them had a conversation where she told him it was time for him to back off and to stop making something happen that clearly wasn't there. This led to Naveed slowly fading away from the group. The other people tried to keep him involved and tried to hang out with him separately with no such luck. George was really good at that. He genuinely loves being around people and spent a lot of time with Naveed, just the two of them hanging out. Of course that stopped at some point too. On Valentine's Day five years ago, I got that terrible call that Lydia had been murdered. Naveed showed up at her apartment early in the evening with flowers and a stuffed teddy bear. Sunflowers. They were Lydia's favorite. He was waiting for her where she normally parked. She got home and a pretty heated discussion happened between the two of them. From what I heard from one of her neighbors at the funeral was that she was trying to get him to understand the two of them were never going to happen and he was belligerently refusing to accept that fact. He pulled out a gun and shot her in the face right there. She died almost instantly. The next few months were a blur. We were all so devastated that something like that could happen to us. It seemed to come from nowhere. Between the funeral, investigations, trial, and all the emotional heaviness that each of those carry, it was no surprise that our fun little group slowly started to disband. Naveed is in jail, serving a life sentence for first degree murder. The girls that Lydia were closest to started a little memorial page on Facebook that still sees activity even after all this time. I'll talk to a few of them every now and then, but I've mostly started hanging out with a different group of people. Lydia still crosses my mind from time to time. I remember visiting her at the fast food place she worked at and her always hooking it up with a little extra food in my bag. We would always make plans to take our dogs on a date together, but it never really happened. Last night, I was hanging out with some friends, just relaxing and playing some cards, when I got a notification on my phone from Snapchat. Lydia P has joined Snapchat. My stomach dropped. I stared at my screen for what felt like an eternity. My screen dimmed and I looked up at one of my buddies who asked if everything was okay. I guess I had turned pale as every drop of blood fell from my face and seemed to be pulling together in my chest. Time seemed at a standstill as I tried to figure out what was happening. Oh yeah, I finally responded, I'm fine. Um, just the coffee, you know how it messes me up sometimes. 
I got up and went to the bathroom to relieve myself and splash a little water on my face. The initial shock of seeing her name on my phone wore off and I started to think logically. I still have Lydia's number in my phone after all these years. I've probably switched phones about a dozen times since her murder, but her phone is still, but her number is still in there. The only logical answer is that the phone company reassigned her number and this person joined Snapchat for the first time. I washed my hands and the initial terror I felt went down the drain. My buddies thought the story was creepy as hell when I told them, but there was still this nagging in the back of my mind and a pit in my stomach. Must be the coffee, I told myself on the ride home. As is the norm before falling back asleep, I found myself switching from all social media in bed, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, maybe a little Tumblr, and if I'm really bored, I guess I check Snapchat. I have an Android, and Snapchat is pure garbage on Android, so I rarely get on there. I'd forgotten about the Lydia situation until the second I tapped that little icon. The app opened up to a dark screen as the camera tried to pick up my feet in the pitch black bedroom. My dog was curled up at my feet. There was a notification from Snapchat that let me know I had a new follower. I knew it was whoever had Lydia's old number, but I found it weird that they would follow me. Sure, I have the number still in my phone, but how would this person know who I am or to follow me? I opened the notification and I looked at her name next to that solid red ghost. My mind flashed back to sitting in the drive-thru and joking about how she was going to get herself in trouble for those extra tacos. She was a great girl, beautiful brown eyes and a smile that made the world a little brighter. I really did miss her. I tapped on the notification mainly out of a compulsion I have to not leave messages unread in my apps. My dog exhaled in exasperation and jumped off the bed. I heard her scurry to her cage. My phone screen dimmed and I jumped a little at the sudden darkness. I ran my finger over the scanner to unlock and turn on the screen and got more blackness. Stupid app always reopens the camera instead of where I left off. I was expecting to have a little light in the room, but just the blackness of my camera. No wait. The bottom left of the camera viewfinder had a weird haze to it. I moved my phone to the left to see that sort of madness my phone seemed to detect. My thumb tapped the screen to make sure it didn't get dim again and a small circle popped up to try and focus on whatever this strange haze was in my room. I couldn't help but shiver as my dog's panting got more intense. That's enough of this, I thought, and went to my friends list to see what was going on with this person who had Lydia's old phone number. Whoever they were, they'd already posted a story or two. The small circle next to the name that Lydia had was black, and I could see some text there, without knowing why I tapped it. The first story was a video of what seemed like a parking lot. It was hard to tell because the phone was moving so much, but I could see the yellow lines of a parking spot. The camera started to slow down a little bit, and I could see what looked like dark red marks on the floor. My blood froze in my veins as I realized I was looking at the blood-stained parking lot of Lydia's apartment complex. There was a second to pause as the story reached its time limit and moved on to the next portion, still recording the yellow lines and red stains. My dog is frantic at this point. She ran out of her cage and scratched at the door, no longer wanting to be in there. There was no way I was getting up to let her out. I'm not even sure I could do anything but grasp my phone with both hands. She jumped on the bed and whimpered at me and then ran back to her cage to cower. The next story, it was a bright white screen that hurt my eyes after being in the dark for so long. The camera moved back a little and I saw the white fur of a teddy bear holding a giant red heart that said life without you is unbearable. It was on it only long enough for me to barely make out what it said, but I recognized it right away from the trial. It was the bear Naveed gave Lydia on the night he killed her. My screen went black again as the next story started, but only for a second or two. It lit up again, but this time yellow and black as my eyes stared at a large sunflower. I felt a tear escape my eye and seemed to exhale for the first time for what felt like hours. I've been holding my breath. I was suddenly aware of how cold the room was. My eyes moved frantically fast in their sockets as I looked at every detail of the sunflower. The story had been going for a while now as it was just a video of the same sunflower filmed over what was probably two minutes. I was captivated and couldn't take my eyes off the screen. Even blinking felt like a betrayal. Finally, the story ended and my screen went black. I heard myself whimper in relief. The next screen was what I saw in the thumbnail before I tapped on it. It was a solid black screen with white text that was comprised of only three words. He got out. 
I threw my phone out of my hands and ran out of my room. I could feel hot bile in the back of my throat and tried to make it to the bathroom before it erupted out of my mouth. I didn't make it to the toilet and instead reached the bathroom sink. Red vomit stained my sink and I jumped as I heard my dog begin to bark ferociously. I crouched over my sink and I tried to stop throwing up. When I glanced at my reflection dimly lit from the small night light I kept in the bathroom, I could tell my eyes were bloodshot from the effort of pushing out the vomit. I felt a wave of coldness through the bathroom and the vomit suddenly stopped. A couple of coughs and some mouthwash and I realized the coldness of the room was gone. My dog was still barking. I called for her to be quiet and she whimpered and I heard her get back into her cage and rattle as she found her way back inside of it. It took me a while to work up the courage to go back to my room, but the logical mind I had prevailed and I came to the conclusion that someone must be pranking me. When I got back to my room, my phone was face up on the floor still lit. The same story was on there, a black screen with three little words. As I stared down at it, the story changed to a black screen with two more words, warn George. I called for my dog. That's the first thing I did after seeing that message from the dead girl on Snapchat. She was in her cage, still panting heavily. I sat on my bed and called her name with my happy voice. She jumped up and curled with me. The mood in my house seemed to change from terrifying to calm, almost as fast as it had changed the other way. My room was no longer cold, my dog was calm, and my phone was acting normal. I sat with my dog for a minute or two and gave her some much needed cuddles. I didn't want to pick up my phone just yet, so I wasn't sure of the time. It felt much later than it probably was, and the fatigue hit me at that moment, but I knew I needed to clean up the mess I made in the bathroom. What had caused my vomit to be red like that? It's never happened before, and I didn't eat anything that color. It honestly looked like I ate an entire bag of hot Cheetos. I'm not sure how to describe the sound that came out of my mouth. It was somewhere between a gasp and a squeal. I was shocked to see that the red vomit I threw up in the sink was perfectly cleaned up as if it had never been there. In fact, my sink looked a bit cleaner. I turned off the light and went back to my room, shutting the door behind me. My phone was still where I left it, its screen thankfully black. What sort of nonsense would I see if I picked it up now? How on earth would I explain this to George? Did Naveed really get out of prison? I was under the impression that he was serving a life sentence with no possibility for parole, so that would mean he escaped somehow, right? Reluctantly, I picked up my phone and unlocked it. Snapchat was still open, so I was greeted with my feet as seen by my camera's viewfinder. I closed the app and realized how late it was. I would have to wait till the morning. Would I even be able to sleep? The answer is yes. I feel like I was asleep before my head even hit the pillow. It was weird because it normally takes me a while to fall asleep. In my dream, I was at a fast food joint where Lydia worked. It was bright and sunny. Lydia and I were sitting on the outside patio eating ice cream. Our dogs were both with us. I was aware of this fact even though I didn't see them. We were finally having that puppy date. Why did you come see me last night? I asked. You were so much closer to so many other people. Why not pick one of the girls? I can't really explain it, she said. I knew I had to tell someone, and I just knew somehow that you would listen. Plus, I know you never put your phone down, she chuckled and put her hands on my shoulder. Her hands were colder than the ice cream, even though she only touched me for a second. I asked her, how do you expect me to explain this to anyone? You use Snapchat. The messages are gone. How are you even able to do this? Talk to me through Snapchat. And now you're in my dream? This really can't be happening. Clouds begin to roll in and the cheerful look on Lydia's face grew grim. You're asking all these questions that I don't have answers to. Ask me something else. We've only got a little more time. Did Naveed escape from prison? He didn't escape, but he got out. Why is he coming after George? They were so close before all of this happened. That's exactly why. Why contact me, I asked. That's not the right question. I heard thunder in the distance. How come you didn't contact someone else? I was holding a black umbrella above my head and lightning and thunder surrounded us. I tried. I tried so hard. She held a white umbrella and tears fell from her eyes. No one else was even open to trying to hear me. They don't care like you did. I didn't even realize how much you cared. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. She reached out to touch my hand and the rain poured. I woke up in a cold sweat, frustrated, terrified, confused. I couldn't move. I didn't want this to happen. It was making me feel things I forgot I felt. Of course I cared for Lydia. I cared for everybody back then. Did I want there to be something more? Well, yeah. 
but that's always what happened when a new girl showed up at one of our hangouts. I was 20 something years old and lonely and just wanted to have someone to love. I couldn't think about these things right now. Sleep, I needed sleep. I dreamt of a parking lot. There was running, a gunshot. I don't remember the rest. My phone woke me up. I must have slept through my alarm because the sun was already shining through the window. I could hear my dog doing her exasperated exhale. At least that was back to normal. It was George. Hey bro, good morning. Morning George, I sleepily responded. How's it going? I was actually planning on calling you today. It's great bro. George loved saying bro. Yeah, I've been wanting to meet up with you for a while. You think you could have lunch today? I sat up in my bed. That's perfect. Let's do lunch. My treat. Haha, <laughs> yeah, that sounds awesome. Text me when you want to eat and where, and I'll meet you there at noon. We said our goodbye and I got dressed, ready for work. I mostly went about my day as normal. After posting the first part of this story on Reddit and seeing the demand for updates, I wasn't sure how to continue until everything else unfolded. We would have to wait and see until the end of the day how my lunch with George went. Noon rolled around when George and I sat down for some tacos. We laughed and joked for a few minutes as we caught up a bit. I hadn't seen him in a few months and he was still the bubbly, cheerful guy that had a joy for life that everybody wishes they had. So bro, he said straight face, I'm not sure if you've heard, but Naveed, you remember Naveed, right? He's the guy who shot Lydia, murdered George. I replied, the word was murdered. He murdered Lydia. I could feel my ears getting hot. Yeah, that's what I mean, he responded. Well, anyway, I can see you're getting upset, so I'll cut to the chase. His lawyer was able to exploit some sort of legal loophole that I can't even begin to explain, but anyway, he got out a couple weeks ago. It must have been weird for George to see all the color drain from my face. I got dizzy and put my taco down. My craving for them seemed to disappear. What do you mean he got out? How did he get out? Where is he? How is this happening right now? He said, dude, calm down. You're asking all these questions I don't have answers to. I stood up, shocked to see the exact words Lydia had said in my dream. What did you just say? George looked around the restaurant. Sit down, bro. Don't make a scene. I'm sorry. I don't know much else. I just felt that you needed to know. I took a deep breath and calmed myself and sat back down, taking a drink of my soda. My hands were trembling and my palms were sweaty. George asked me why this upset me so much and I tried my hardest to explain. George actually laughed. He laughed at the story. He apologized profoundly, but he still laughed. He thought I was joking. I tried to explain how serious I was and he sobered up and apologized again. The restaurant got cold. I felt my phone vibrate. I pulled it out of my pocket out of habit and saw the little ghost on my notification bar. Lydia is typing a message. My eyes grow wide as I showed George my phone. His smile disappeared and I saw him physically shiver. Bro, stop. This isn't funny anymore. Who's doing this? I don't know, dude. I'm telling you this is real. I swiped away the conversation and opened my contacts. I don't know why I didn't check this earlier. After scrolling to the names that start with an L, I showed George what I had suspected throughout the day, but I couldn't bring myself to check. I don't have Lydia's number saved in my phone anymore, George. I thought I did last night when I first got the notification, and I thought someone may have had her number, but look, she's not in here. I must have deleted it or it got erased or something. Look, now Lydia told me to warn you, so I'm warning you. Don't talk to Naveed. If he tries to reach out to you, don't respond. I know you guys were close until the murder, and it felt like you were the only friend he had, but please, George, don't reach out to him. I don't know what he'll do if he finds you. With horror in his eyes and his hand over his mouth, George reached out to touch my screen. I could tell he was swiping down to the notifications and opening Snapchat. I could see the yellow reflecting in his eyes and switch to black and then white as the conversation opened up. There were some colors reflected on his face, now as pale as mine was when he told me Naveed was out. His eyes somehow got wider and I saw his lip tremble. As I turned the phone towards me to look at the screen, I saw a sunflower on the screen with red drops on it. The screen went black as it switched to the next story. Three more words that made me drop my phone on the table. Don't trust Naveed. George grabbed his phone and his wallet and practically ran from the table. I heard him mutter something about having to get back to work as he made a beeline for his car. I was in shock and shivering for a few seconds before grabbing my phone and going after him. He was already fumbling with his car door and getting inside. George, wait! I called out in vain, pounding on his window. He looked at me with tears in his eyes and put his car in reverse. I'm sorry, he said quietly. I'm not even sure he said it out loud. He reversed out of the parking spot and sped down the road. Before I could try to process this crazy lunch, my phone vibrated again. I was frustrated as I looked down at the next Snapchat story. Two black screens with two messages from Lydia. Thank you. We're not done. And that's the end and it's to be continued. Okay, 
wow, that is so much to process. First of all, I don't even understand how somebody could commit a murder like that and then find some sort of legal loophole to get out of prison. I know that spirits can manipulate phones and electronics, so maybe that makes sense for the Snapchat, but I guess we're gonna have to just wait and see what happens next in part three. I read part one and two in this one. What do you guys think of that? Please, please, please make sure to drop some comments down below and let me know what you guys think because I'm like kind of quiet right now because I'm trying to process everything that I just read that is so incredibly spooky and so good and so good and I just can't wait to hear what happens next. Please, please, please drop your theories down below as to what you think Naveed would do to George if he found him what you think is going on in here and I'll be replying to as many of you as I can because I don't know guys, it sounds spooky. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, like I said, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button because I'm uploading every single day and please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. It makes my heart super, super happy when you guys do that so please do that and I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness and until next time, I love you.